Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm glad to be here. So to add a little bit more context in terms of why am I talking about these things? So for those of you that are graduating or maybe still studying on, on the way to graduation, I can definitely relate. And when I when I was actually graduating from university, I was so confused about what I wanted to do. I've ended up actually, believe it or not, um, having 17 different jobs from the age of 15 until later into my 30s because I couldn't figure out what is it that I wanted to do and there was little support and so so when it comes to you know figuring out what is it that you want what do you do post graduation and how do you actually apply some some uh strategies to help you move forward um you know i've, I've definitely been there so what i want to do with you guys today in the short presentation so it's 20 minutes and i can talk about these topics for hours so if you've ever hear, heard me speak before you know it's something i truly feel passionate about this uh this um uh uh this what I do today essentially was a passion that turned into a career and then a business. So I'm hoping to, that what you're going to take away from this today is a couple of things. One, kind of understanding what is, you know, where is it that you want to be? And two, how do you actually create a plan that gets you to moving? So moving from thinking to actually doing, because I feel that's where we mostly struggle with. Whether you are a student, a fresh graduate, or a mid-level professional, what we struggle with is getting inside our heads and we're planning and thinking about what we want to do, but we don't actually do things to move us forward. So that's kind of my aim here today. Also, because we have such a short time, I invite you to go ahead and drop questions to the organizers so that I make sure to cover those as well. All right, so before I go into actual strategies, you can apply to create that true career for yourself. And I, I, I'm going to talk to you a bit about some things you need to keep in mind. So when we're talking about the future of work, what is the future your future career can potentially look like? You need to bring awareness to what's out there, right? We don't know what we don't know, right? We don't know what we don't know. So how can you find out? How can you do research to identify what does the world of need, work need tomorrow? We all know that over the last couple of years, the world flipped upside down. We now need new skill set. We now need new ways to be able to adjust to work, etc. So what I encourage you to start with always, and this is continuously throughout your career, is stay in tune with what's happening in the job market. What are the top skills that are needed for the world of work tomorrow? And although we cannot pretend, um, we cannot predict what is going to be needed five years from now, we can definitely start looking at trends. Trends would be an example, for, for instance, when um, with technology coming out, right? So a lot of tech is going to be taking over a lot of different roles, but also a lot of jobs are going to be created as a result of those tech. So questions are, what are some um, technologies you need to learn that might be great in your particular area of interest? What are some human skills you need to consider? More and more, every time I read reports about what's, what's to come in the future of work, more and more human skills are becoming essential. What do I mean by that? Meaning that... Uh, your ability to negotiate, your ability to motivate others, your ability to deal with people, emotional intelligence, your ability to stay curious and creative in the work that you do. All of these skills are very much needed and they're becoming more and more needed as we are essentially progressing in the way we work. And it's only going to get more crazier from here as all this technology that continuously come out comes out is going to take over. So so if you have not uh, read reports like the future of work, um, future of skills, whether by LinkedIn Learning or Mercer or McKinsey and Company or the World Economic Forum, I highly recommend for you to do that. And I highly recommend you do this throughout your um, career because, again, it's about preparing for the future. And a, a great example is there has been a lot of jobs that have been lost over the last couple of years. Why? Because people were not able to adjust to what the world needs today, post-COVID, and whatever future might bring us. So staying curious and continuously trying to figure out what could be potential next step for you is key in order for us to stay competitive and make sure that we have a job moving forward, regardless of how the the market is doing, etc. So, so just for starters, I think that's essential to kind of think about. And also from here, you can get some ideas of 
what is interesting to you? You might come across different roles that you never thought about. And again, it goes back to, we don't know what we don't know. So we have to expose ourselves to different ways of thinking, to different reports that are out there, to different networks, to individuals that we normally wouldn't talk to. Because I guarantee you, the perception you have today of potential job opportunities for yourself, a career, is limited to what is actually out there. And a final point I'll mention on this slide is that one of the biggest things is continuously really just um, a look, you know, expanding, expanding that network, expanding that mindset. Again, if you take away anything from the slide is we don't know what we don't know, guys. So how can you try to find out the unknown? All right. So now let's go into a little bit of kind of exploring some choices. So at the end of the day, it comes down to choices. So you might be sitting there thinking, okay, perhaps you are somebody who just graduated or still studying a particular major, and maybe you are interested to pursue a career in that major, right? Maybe not. Maybe you are one of those students who have graduated after X number of years studying a particular major. You've kind of said, listen, I've already been doing this for three to four years. I'm so close to graduation. I am not going to change my major now. But deep down, you have no interest in that major. <laughs> well, the good news is that it's all right. So there's you don't necessarily have to pursue your uh, the you don't have to pursue a, um, a job in the major you graduated in. You don't have to. In fact, I think over like 60% of graduates around the world do not go into the major that they actually studied. So if you are one of those people who are like, you know what, I really hated engineering. I don't know why I was studying it. And now I have to get a job in engineering because that's what my experience or that's my degree. It's not true. Okay. It's not true. It's, it's about what is it essentially you want to do. And I'm going to talk about that in terms of the strategy next. So, so identifying whether you're essentially like, what are your choices? Do you want to stay within your particular area or not? Right. At this stage in your career, at any stage in your career, guys, realistically, whether you're a fresh graduate, whether you have some experience or you're an experienced professional, you always have a choice. It's just about how, how do you actually how do you actually transition to the career that you want? So if you, again, if you if you study the major, and you're not happy with it, doesn't necessarily mean you need to go into a different major. You can just start exploring options that are for you. So look for that change. What can that change be like? Maybe you say, I don't even want to go into corporations. Maybe I don't want to work for a big company. Maybe I want to become an entrepreneur, right? So identifying your choices. Now I would recommend just take a piece of paper and just write down your options, like put your options on a piece of paper in front of you and say, what are my options right now? Where am I, where do I, like, what, is, where are you stuck, right? Because that is the biggest challenge I see is that often we either don't know what we, what we want to do, we have no idea, or we know what we want to do, but we're not sure of the steps to take there. So start with the basics. There is a beauty and power in going basic and just writing down what is it that you might be interested in? What are some things that you have enjoyed doing, right? So identifying those areas and then next saying, okay, how can I actually test those areas? Meaning how can I get more information about each of these areas I'm interested in and how can I identify, you know, is this really the true path for me? Experimentation. And, and especially for those that are just graduated, please, please, do not jump into a career for the sake of jumping into a career. You will rarely have the freedom you have today to explore, to jump from job to job as you do today. This is a perfect time to say, where can I volunteer for two months? Where can I intern for two, two months? Where can I just, I don't know, job shadow um, somebody, right? How can, I, how can I expose myself to somebody I can learn from? This is a perfect opportunity for you to just jump around as much as you need to until you figure out what is truly um, interesting to you. And also another thing a lot of graduates um, think is that this next career, this next job is it. Like you have to think so hard about what is it that you want to You don't. Purely pick what you want to do experiment with it. And if you don't like it six months from now, or if you, or if you loved it for a year and then after a year, you don't like it, change. There's nothing worse than staying in a job you don't like. And I think the, the society and the community that we're in often pushes us to kind of have that stable job and you have to be in this job. Those days are gone. 
All right. So most importantly is what is it that you enjoy doing? What is it that you're good at? And what is the job market required? And today is better than any time in our history of, of work, from my experience, that we're actually able to create what we want for our jobs. So I want to make sure we have time for questions. So I know I'm going quick through this. So I just want to go to the next slide real quick to talk to you a little bit about how you can growth hack and create a, an actual kind of process that can help you quickly get through your choices. So some of you might have thought, might have heard of growth hacking. So essentially, like we, the idea is to get this right, right? So when it comes to our career. So when we do things that require a lot of time and effort, such as applying to jobs, looking at what's out there, you know, filling out applications, right? We, we can easily get demotivated. So growth hacking, which is usually used in business and marketing and et cetera, but growth hacking essentially is the, the way to reduce time and efforts. So one, using a bit of understanding of marketing, how to get people to know you, right? Because at the end of the day, when you're job searching and exploring your next step, it's about your personal brand and how you market yourself. Number two, having a strong, unique selling proposition that will attract people and to want to talk to you, right? So what makes you unique from every other student or graduate that just finished the degree in a particular area has an X number of experiences or internships? What makes you different? There's something that makes every single one of us unique and different. You need to figure out what that is and you need to figure out how to actually uh, sell yourself in a setting where, where they're in an interview, an employer, a network, et cetera, right? So essentially, growth hacking is, is the process to help you move through different through the different process of figuring out what you want to do. You can apply this to anything. Again, this, is in, this was used in business usually. This business right now is essentially your future. So applying these steps. And what do I mean by that? So... Essentially, what we're meaning is engineering. So if you look at the five different pillars that, or the six in this case, the six pillars that growth hacking consists of. First is engineering. In the case of career search, it is the what, where, why, marketing materials that you need to come up with, right? So what is it that you want to do? What are potential areas? Where do you want to do these things, right? Do you want to stay within your country? Do you want to do it internationally? Do you, do you want it to be a big organization or a small organization? Do you want to work for a startup? Do you want to work with a big team or a small team? Where? Do you want to do it remotely? Do you want to do it globally, right? Why? What is exciting to you about that particular opportunity? What does the future of work looks like in that particular industry, right? Another part of step of the engineering is creating your marketing material. How does your CV look like? How does your LinkedIn look like? Is it fully? Is it describing exactly the person that you're aiming to become? All right. Do you know what you want to sell? And they don't ask themselves, what am I doing wrong? They keep doing the same thing over and over again. And growth hacking is helping you rethink that process and check in with yourself in this little, in this little pathway and say, okay, what can I do better? Where am I getting results? If I'm not getting leads from LinkedIn about job search, if I'm not getting, you know, if I'm not getting the results I want from these platforms, A, what am I doing wrong? And if I'm doing everything right, then maybe that's not the audience for me. So what else can I do? Right. So, and then the other, the other couple is analytical thinking. So are you exploring the right areas? What are your obstacles? That's one of the biggest things you want to always question yourself. What haven't I tried? What other, what obstacles come in my way of me trying to figure that out? So if I don't know what I want to do, what have I tried to figure out what I want to do? Have I talked to people? Have I not talked to people? Who have I talked to? Have I talked to the right people? Um, next one is research and development. So again, going back to what other, uh, doing research, right? So looking at different reports, what haven't I thought about? Who can help me and figure out what it is? Can I talk to, I don't know, university professor? Can I talk to somebody like Elena who, who does career development? Can I talk to anybody else that I meet through my network, et cetera? And finally, just getting creative about the process. For example, you know, trying different um uh, trying different ways to reach people right so another thing that i see people often um uh where they hold back is reaching out to your network so you know you say oh, i don't want to bother people when i'm emailing them on linkedin or i'm asking them for advice it's irrelevant whether you're bothering them or not your job is to 
get yourself to where you want to be. And that means trying different ways to connect with people. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you experiment, experiment reaching out to people, experiment getting information, etc. When it comes to job applications, if some of you guys in that in that stage, job applications, do I want to send a regular CV or do I want to send a video CV, right? Can you create a video CV? How can you get more creative about your job search? Of course, being mindful, does the company that you're applying for, would they appreciate it, right? So looking at how you can be more creative in your approach. And a final note I'll mention, and then I'm, I'm happy to take questions is, I, so I, I have a podcast and I interview a lot of entrepreneurs and different individuals that are just doing amazing things. And so I was interviewing one guy, his name is Josh Little. He's the founder of Volley App and he's a founder of four other tech startups, um, two of them that sold successfully. And, and, he was, and he does a lot of speaking engagements with university students as well. And we were talking and I said, Josh, what do you think is the, the biggest thing that you, know, you want people to know? And he said that for every startup that he started, he went through at least eight, nine, 10, 12 different ideas sometimes before he actually got to the idea that he implemented and that was a successful business moving forward. So he did it for four startups. So four multiplied times 12, we're talking about over, you know, a, a huge number of time, a huge number of ideas that he had to get through to actually get to a product and a business that worked. And that's the same thing in your career. There's no magic formula. There's no easy way. Not There's no specific way to go about it. There's no... There's no one way to go about your career. If anything, if you see everybody going one way, which is graduate, apply for a job, get a job, you work, et cetera, probably not the best way. Why? Because everybody's doing the same thing. If you want to have an extraordinary career, if you want to create your career, you need to do what other people are not doing. So this is where I'm hoping that maybe growth hacking you can apply in your career because it's a loop that gets you to think the what, the how, the what's working, what's not working. Who can help me? Why do I want to do this? And continuously question yourself and stay curious because that is what's going to get you to have a career you truly want. And it requires that much effort. But otherwise, everybody would have great careers. But there's a, there, there, there is a, a fact that we need to consider is that over 80% of working professionals today and continuously over many, many years of the study that are completely unsatisfied in, in their jobs. They're unsatisfied and over 80% are disengaged in their jobs. And many of them are making great money and they have great titles, yet they're just simply don't enjoy what they do. And I think life is too short as well as too long sometimes to do something you don't enjoy. So I hope, I hope that if you took away anything is that you can create the career you want. You need to start, you need to experiment, and you need to get through these experiments fast, like in growth hacking. Don't get stuck doing the same thing for six months. Experiment for a month, check with yourself what's working, what's not working, do better.